Back in March of 2023, Unique Geese took an interest in the indie horror title Garden of Ban Ban. This series was known for being low quality, so he wanted to try and remake the game without as many flaws. Over the course of just one week, he and some friends produced a version of Ban Ban that thoroughly impressed me. Ban Ban Reincarnated. The visual quality and atmosphere was especially well done. Comparing the two games was night and day. That's not to say the game was perfect, it definitely had quite a lot of flaws, but it was genuinely impressive with a time limit of one week. But the game couldn't continue. The original creators were fine with the remake for Chapter 1 since it was free, but all future plans had to be halted to avoid legal ramifications. Because of this, the team began work on their own mascot horror game, Indigo Park. The project was officially announced in July, and it generated a lot of hype. I fully stayed away from all information pertaining to the project so that I would be able to go in completely blind. Honestly, I'd completely forgotten about the game until my friend Gelrat mentioned it to me. Now that the game is out, we can finally take a look at it. The Steam description is as follows. Explore the abandoned childhood wonder of Indigo Park. Guided by Rambly the Raccoon, help restore power to the destroyed amusement park while you run from the reason it shut down. This is a fairly simple description, but it was plenty to get me interested. I already wanted to check out the game because of how impressed I was with Reincarnated, and now that it's here, I have some fairly high expectations. Also, Gel is here. The game opens with the protagonist, Ed, looking through old promotional material for a theme park known as Indigo Park. We see chat logs of Ed trying to convince a friend to come explore the abandoned park with him alongside shots of his room covered with park posters and merchandise, all with notes written on them. He's clearly been researching the place, even holding on to an old newspaper about the park's sudden closing. The music during this entire scene is a complete bop. After some clips of the drive there, we find ourselves outside the entrance of the park. Ed finds an open door on the side of the building, locating a monitor with the park's main mascot, Rambly the Raccoon, acting as somewhat of a guide. The park is in shambles, and Rambly's screen frequently glitches out, but it's functional enough that he can direct us over to the computer to register. Rambly is absolutely adorable. His animations and personality are bouncy and bubbly and cute. They add a ton of charm that I really appreciate, especially since we'll be seeing him frequently. Since the front gate is locked, Rambly helps Ed locate a generator to restore power to the building, allowing him to enter the park. There are toys scattered throughout the place that function as collectibles. I always like looking around for collectibles like this, but my need to find every single one definitely made it so that I missed some scares later on since I was looking at the floors instead of the action. It's fairly easy to miss a lot of animations here, which is slightly disappointing, but I also think it adds a lot to replay value, especially when it comes to the scares. Rambly directs you to the gift shop where he equips you with a critter cuff. This is essentially just a wristband that gives you access to certain areas of the park. All you have to do is tap your wrist to the scanner with your big gross man arms and the doors will open right up. The next area has a massive statue of Rambly holding hands with Isaac Indigo, the creator of the park. This statue's head follows you around wherever you go, which is pretty creepy. I think it might have been even creepier if it functioned kind of like a weeping angel, where the head moves to face you whenever you look away instead of doing it right in front of your face. This game is fairly short, like hour, maybe. What? <laughs> is that supposed to be like, oh, it it caved in? Yeah, it caved in, but it's it's just, don't go back. <laughs> what an awesome animation that I saw today. It, it, yeah, isn't it? I get that this was supposed to be a barricade so you can't go back, but we could have at least gotten an animation for it to create a little bit of intensity. All we got was the sound effect of someone throwing a fistful of tiny rocks at a wall and then BAM! Massive chunks of debris blocking the path. This is probably the weirdest loading screen in the game. They're already kind of odd with a sudden fade to black each time, but this is the only time where the loading screen masks a major event. Rambly tells us that since the park is undergoing renovations, we get a discount making everything free. To celebrate, he wants us to get on Rambly's Railroad for a ride. Why not celebrate this great deal with a ride on my railroad? To test your sleuthing skills, I'll let you find this one all by yourself. Sleuthing skills? Ho <laughs> ho! Detective mode? How hidden will this railway be? Found it. I'm such a good detective. <laughs> Rambly's Railroad has a big pink train that we can ride in. We're taken along a big railroad where we meet all the cast members of Indigo Park. There's Molly, Finley, and Lloyd. <sighs> hey there, Lloyd. <laughs> what? With that common folk name, I am the proud, the prestigious, the professional Lloydford L. Lyon, actor extraordinaire! Great act, Lloyd. Of course it was! I'm the <laughs> Partway through the ride, the cart breaks down and you need to head into the back room to start the generator back up with some spare gears. After that, it's relatively smooth sailing to the end where you can collect fun photos from your ride. Yeah, look at the TVs, by the way. Like the... Yeah, it's your photos. 
Ah. Nothing to note there. <laughs> no? Okay. Nothing of note. Now that we're constantly looking over our shoulder, it's time to explore the rest of the park. This really feels exactly like most theme parks I've been to. They captured the feel incredibly well. Further down the path, there's an information kiosk that'll give you information about all the collectibles that you've picked up throughout the game. The right side of the screen shows Ed's personal thoughts on each item, and you can learn even more by clicking each one to get Rambly's thoughts. Look at this one. It talks about how when you use code BEN again at checkout, you can get 10% off Gamer Sepsis delicious zero-calorie keto-friendly energy formula, full of essential vitamins and the caffeine you need to start your day. Kinda weird for that to be at a park. Although Rambly wants us to head to Jetstream Junction, the door is completely locked. Fortunately, the key is sitting in Lloyd's Theater. The door was locked earlier since our critter cuff didn't have high enough clearance, so Rambly upgrades it and we enter the theater. Wonder if he'll miss it. Oh. <laughs> something more important. There's something definitely more Oh, dude, shh, we don't care about him. Oh, okay. <laughs> We don't care about him right now. We need. We need. We need collectibles. <laughs> He's dead. It's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, what happened? <laughs> completely missed. Where'd he go? <laughs> um. Am I just still missing things? In that. In that fucking motion of you like stepping back and you twirled around. There behind you was supposed to be something peeking. <laughs> it's not there anymore. The theater back rooms don't have cameras for Rambly to watch over us with, so from this point on, we're going to be going in completely alone. The room is fairly claustrophobic, being a pseudo storage facility. Lloyd tries to attack here, but is thankfully cut off by the clutter. We grab the key, then head back towards the stage, only to be stopped by Lloyd when trying to use the critter cuff. The cuff emits a loud ringing noise that fends off the lying, allowing us to escape and unlock the junction. Rambly suggests we take a look at Molly's rooftop races, but we explore a map first and found this arcade machine of a cute platformer. The game shows Molly crashing her plane in the woods and Rambly coming to make sure she's okay. The two are cut off by Salem, the skunk who caused the crash in the first place. Salem uses a potion to turn Molly evil, initiating a fairly quick boss fight. We actually saw Salem for the first time on the railroad where the cart broke down. There were cardboard cutouts of her in the debris. On the top floor, we learn that Rooftop Races is currently broken down. Rambly attempts to call a repairman, but the number is out of service. I was joking around here trying to hop the debris and I think I broke the physics engine for a bit. Double jump! <laughs> Like the game! Whoa! Whoa! What the fuck was that? Since rooftop races is out of order, Rambly suggests we try out Molly's landing pad instead. But first, there was something important to do. I want to ride in this plane. <laughs> we are legal adults. <laughs> Molly's landing pad is a large playroom similar to the one in Ban Ban Reincarnated. This one is way better designed, and nothing is flickering in and out of existence by clipping with other objects like the tubes originally were. There are five rotatable cubes in the walls with matching symbols throughout the play place. We need to find each colored symbol and rotate the blocks to match. This is where the game starts getting more obvious with the scares. Instead of having the occasional spook in the distance like before, here we are directly interacting with Molly. The animations are a bit odd, though. Molly clips into the ground for her first appearance and drops blood that immediately disappears during her second. The play place has a few pads like this that act as a trampoline, launching you into the air. You learn the mechanic through experimentation, and I thought it was pretty cool that when you hit the first pad, there's a ball pit right underneath you so you can safely land and make your way back up now that you understand what it does. Except for some reason, this just kills you and sets you a few feet back. I'm not sure why they added fall damage for only this section, since later on you tank way bigger falls with no issue. After bouncing through the play place and getting the remaining symbols, the doors at the top open right up and we can move on. It's gonna be our big chase in these tubes. What? What? What are you talking about? What? Oh, Jesus. Uh, what? Uh. <laughs> Epic. That was a really cool chase where everything stopped and then I did. <laughs> I'm not totally sure what caused the game to break there, but the rest of the chase was mostly straightforward. The music also slaps here. There are a few pads you have to use during the chase that work exactly the same in the play place, except for one near the end which is a different jump pattern that got me killed. We dodge into some air vents, running into Rambly who warns us that the area ahead is for employees only. It's the only way to go, so... Hey there. <laughs> Oh, 
This is probably one of the weakest visuals in the game. Look at this pooling blood, it's just a rasterized photo, slowly increasing in size. Rambly admits to us that the park has been inactive for years, although he doesn't go much into why. He was so excited for a visitor that he wanted to give us the best possible experience, not realizing how dangerous the park had become. He mentions that he has all the repair documentation needed to fix up the park in his database, but that he needs a human user to help him out with it. We agree to help restore the park, exiting the room and entering another hub area. This leads directly towards Oceanic Odyssey. Finley's home. The mascot appears through the glass to our left before the chapter comes to a close with a musical number that reminds me of the end credits of Portal 2. It's really cute. I loved Indigo Park. I definitely think some things need some more polish, like a few animations, sections of the environment, and some minor oddities like the game changing your FOV when you hold the sprint button without moving. But overall, it was a really enjoyable experience. The writing was really charming, and Rambly was the perfect little companion. You can really tell how much heart and soul was put into this game, and that greatly adds to the experience. It was definitely somewhat of a walking simulator, and I'd like to see more puzzles in the future, but the entire experience was really enjoyable front to back. I think with a few bug fixes and tweaks here and there, we'll be getting a really solid project as the chapters release. I'll absolutely be keeping an eye out for each new chapter in the series. The music, visuals, story, characters, and gameplay were all very well executed, and I can't wait to see what the series has in store for the future. I hope to see you all again. Have a great rest of your day.